todos aqui que estão na igreja, que estão conectados. We greet everyone who are here in the church and the ones who are connected with us in the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite the church to stand up so that we can read the Word of God, which is in the book of Acts, Acts 2. We're going to read three verses. First verse. We're going to read four verses from the first to third. Verse 1, 2, 3, and 12. Is he in the projection? Amen. And what the Lord says the following. When the day of Pentecost had, been, had full, fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Verse 12. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? What, whatever could this mean? Lord, Holy God, your word has been read. We ask, Lord, that you bless us even more through your word, because uh, through the praises we have already filled our lives with our joy and your peace. We pray to you, therefore, in the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, who are those that have received this blessing from the Lord? And if the brethren have not observed, have not noticed, in the last verse, they were one of the same people from the first three verses that we just read. Who are those? Those are people like, like each one of us. People like also the ones who have been called by God in the womb of the, their house. People that had nothing to offer other than what in Psalms they would say, a, a pure heart and sincere heart, a happy heart, and also a praise to the Lord. Nothing else other than that. Abraham was called by the Lord, and he had nothing to offer to the Lord, material things, but he had nothing. Everything belonged to the Father and his family. And when the Lord takes their, from, that from there, he was sure to tell them, get out of the family, your and go to a land that I will still I'm going to show you. And, I will, and later on he tells him, I'm going to make of you a great nation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But Abraham was not the only one. He had nothing. But also Gideon, he had nothing. He was the smallest in the house of the father. He was called by God. And 300 men that had done nothing, they defeated, they won, won the battle with the Midianites. And he, they didn't do anything. The Lord gave the victory to their hands. And then comes David, a man just like us, like each any one of us. And then come David comes, the youngest son. So in their chronology in that time, he was the last one that would receive a blessing from the Father. But the Lord goes and calls him from, from the place where he was taking care of the sheep. And he calls him from there and transforms him into a king. But he, just like each one of us, he says the following. I'm poor and needy. 
he had nothing to offer other than a sincere heart, a, a heart that the Lord is going to speak. I found David according to my own heart. And those men that we that received this blessing from the Lord, they also, it was the same way for them. They were fishermen, common people, men that had nothing, men that had nothing to offer to Jesus. So, in such a way that on, on the Last Supper, the Lord sent them to to the store to buy stuff because they had nothing to they had nothing to offer. But they they had the profile, the true worshiper, I mean, that praise the Lord, the man that give their life to the Lord, that looking back, Abraham, the profile of the true worshiper, the man that gives his life without looking back. The servants there, they gave their life without looking back. They believe in the promise of the Lord. And here I'm going to tell the brethren that what we have followed in the last few weeks. We, in the last few weeks, we studied and participated on studies in which the Lord Jesus, He passed in the midst of the people and they operate great blessings in the life of the servant of Jericho, Bartimaeus, the Samaritan woman. And in all this moment that he was going through, the Lord leaves him a message, a prophetic message to each one of us. In each one of those passages, the Lord Jesus gives salvation to the one who is needy. Salvation. So in every time the Lord has operated in this way, the disciples that were there, the disciples also, they were participating on this operation of the living God on earth. The disciples there, like workers, as men, as servants of God, they were the first to receive the blessing, to witness the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. The blind was healed. The disciples praised the Lord. The man of the flow, the woman of the flow of blood, was she was healed, and the disciples praised the Lord because it was yet another experience that they were going through, experience that we now come here on the text that we just read. The Lord Jesus made a made a promise to each one of the disciples, saying, "Stay in Jerusalem until uh, power comes down from heaven upon you." And the text that now we read that was being fulfilled. A few went astray on the path of Emmaus. Uh, the disciples were bathing on the Sea of Galilee. They went back to their previous life, but the Lord, but Lord Jesus went there and rescued each one and showed to each one that the promise of the Lord is there in Jerusalem. Stay in Jerusalem until from heaven you'll be filled with power. The Lord was promising to them something that they didn't know. What power was that? What is this that the Lord have, has? What is this that the Lord is going to give us? What is this? What does it mean when those men from the last verse that we read, when they said, when they they spoke about the power of the Lord being put out on upon the church of the Lord? What is that's new that is about to come? The Lord Jesus came to pray signs and wonders. The Lord Jesus came and spoke about His salvation, the, His project of salvation. The Lord came and forgave. The Lord came and suffered. He died on the cross. And is, there is still more? Yes, there is more. There is power. There is praise. There is adoration. There is operation of the Lord continually in our lives and through our lives. Because the Lord says the following. The church was going to do operate more wonders and miracles than the Lord Jesus himself operated as when he was on earth. And the operation of the Lord, if we were, would re write on the book, you could gather all the paper in the world, it would still not be enough. But the Bible says that the church would operate more wonders because Jesus is going to the Father. Blessed be the Lord. Fulfilling those days in which the Lord said, Stay in Jerusalem until power comes down from heaven. And they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Tongues of fire before everyone's eyes. Eyes. 
they began to speak in other tongues and they were amazed. What is this? How can it be? What kind of power is that? And only the ones who were baptized with the Holy Spirit can understand what kind of power is this. It is not a power come from man. It is a power come from God. You know what power is this? The power of being able to go out and evangelize. The Lord Jesus is a blessing for our life and the Holy Spirit goes and confirms the blessing upon that person in need. The Lord Jesus has salvation to give you. And the Holy Spirit comes and prays salvation on the life of that the one who is in need. Oh, to have a, a door, a new job for you. The Lord has shown, the Holy Spirit has shown that He wants to give you a new uh, open uh, door for a new job. And this is power, but it doesn't come from man. It comes from God. It comes from eternity. Until you receive power from heaven. Until from heaven came a, a great sound and filled the entire house. The entire operation of the Lord occurs in, in our midst and in the house of the Lord. It is in the church. It is in the temple of the Lord. In the sanctuary of the Lord. It is in the sanctuary of the Lord. So you, you are in the right place. You are in the house of the Lord. Waiting. Waiting to receive power from the Lord. The first, or the first, first blessing is ours. The first gift, the first joy is ours. Is the ones that have been baptized from those servants. But joy does not stay in us. It goes, goes towards the one who are with us. And the text that we read it says the following: the men went there and began to see all this, and they began to speak to one another. What is going on? What is this? How can it be? What is going to come after this? What is going to come after this? What is going to come after this, my brethren, is salvation. It is eternity for each one of us. And eternal praise is adoration to our Lord that is already in eternity. He has prepared a place for each one of us. What comes after that is our full joy. Blessed be the Lord. Our full joy. Our joy of being in the house of the Lord. Baptized with the Holy Spirit. Our joy of seeing our family members, our neighbors also being reached by the Lord. But the greatest joy that awaits us is in the glory of the Lord. Because the Lord says the following. The Lord says, one, one, only one sinner repented. There is, there is a feast in heaven. And what is the best feast for us other than this one in heaven? And what is our greatest request other than to ask the Lord to participate on a feast in heaven? Because our objective is this one, is to come, go to heaven, baptized with the Holy Spirit, reaching lives to the Lord, but to go to heaven and celebrate with angels, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord has shown in a vision, the Lord has shown in a spiritual gift, that we were all, all here working. And praying to the Lord and praising the Lord but working. And uh, our reward, our wage was the blessing of the Lord, but the blessing of receiving in the in first place the experiences that the, the Lord has given to each one of us. And that's what happened with the disciples. The Lord wanted to operate on the life of the others. But they were the first to receive the blessing of the Lord. They were the first. You want to be the first? In the house of the Father? You want to be baptized or have a renewal of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the house of the Father? You want to receive a new blessing, a new experience with the Lord in the house of the Father? Because in the house of the Father, there is joy. It never ceases. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord also has shown, has spoke about a, a, a sister, and she, she felt unworthy of receiving anything in her life, and especially of receiving a blessing from the Lord. She felt unworthy. And I said here, the Lord operated on the life of the ones who 
thought that they were unworthy. They, in the case of Gideon, for example, the Lord went there and operated. The Lord went there and rescued him, called him to work on this work, to receive a blessing from the Lord. And Jesus came and chose the ones who were small. They had nothing to offer. They all were also small fishermen, poor and needed like anyone, each one of us. And today the Holy Spirit of God is calling you. Are you small, poor and needed? We are also the same way, my sister. And the Lord is calling you because He's calling you for an eternal work, the work of the Holy Spirit. The work's not done by the hand of man, but the, by the hands of the Lord. When the Lord operates all things, everything according to His will, nothing on heaven and earth takes place other than through the will of God, or work of the Holy Spirit. Do you feel like you are small? The Lord is calling you f to do this work. Because here, there is no one who is big. There is no great singer or preacher. We have only the servant of the Lord. The Lord is calling us to be servant of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the reward the Lord has for you tonight is baptism with the Holy Spirit. It's an eternal and precious stone. The Lord has a blessing for you because that's the blessing that He gave to each one of us one day. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus.
church to stand up. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And they were all amazed. And they were amazed. They were rejoicing. They were happy because of salvation of the Lord. That's what He operates on us. Joy in our midst. Lord God, we praise Your holy name. Glorify, Lord, and praise You for Your salvation. For the eternal feast, Lord, that is taking place in Your eternity. Lord, we praise You for everything and ask, receive Your into Your altar, the service in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service is over. The brethren to desire a prayer. We're going to hear, we are here at your disposal. And the brethren also at Zoom, there is a group of archers and deacons. They are available. If anybody needs a prayer, we are here at your disposal. And to all the peace of the Lord Jesus.